Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use a data label in the x-axis or your horizontal axis. So what I mean, let's say for example that we have a chart here and it's got some data that's comparing um, some sales between the year 2004 and 2014. Now we have our time periods here, January to December, but we also have a label here that indicates the change, whether it's a positive or negative change, if it's up or it's down for the difference in those uh, years, 2004 and 2014. So let's say, for example, if I change the data here, let's change uh, this one. Maybe we'll make this 200. And you'll notice now in February, that positive 20, 20%, that arrow is also going to change, and it's going to become negative. So press Enter. You'll notice now it is a downward arrow, and it's minus 4%, basically 4% down from 2014 to 2004. So now I'll show you how to create this data label and use these arrows and also indicate the number of percentage in your horizontal axis. So let's go ahead and copy this data. I'm going to just copy this data, the month, uh, these two years, and I'll show you how to build uh, this thing here. So let's go in here and go under a cell D and control, that was control C to copy, and now I'm doing control V to paste. And what I need to do is build this table first. I'm going to have to build that change table. So I'm going to just type change here. And the formula here is basically going to be um, what's the percentage change from 2014 to uh, 2004, 2004. So basically, that's going to be this divided by that and minus 1. So I'm going to put uh, that in parentheses. Let me put the, the division aspect of this formula in parentheses. And now you notice it's going to be 59%. Let me go ahead and double click the fill handle here to bring the calculation down. It's just going to copy that formula down. And I'm just going to change this to percentage. So now we have our percent here. Now, there's more that we would need to do with this one, actually. Um, because this is the formula here. We wanted to have that particular symbol. So the symbols I'm going to just put in this cell here. These will just be my helper cells. The symbol that we can use is just the uh, a, a symbol in the Arial font. So I'm going to go under Insert and go under Symbol here. And I'm just going to look for the Arial font here. And in the subset, I'm going to look for geometric shapes. There, There's a lot of different uh, subsets here. And the one that we want is under the geometric shape. So I'm going to go ahead and find it again. I kind of lost it now. I'm going to go ahead and find geometric shape. Or I can just type geometric shape. Geo, right? Type geo, and it'll take me there. And the one I want is uh, this one. So I want the pointing up triangle. Go ahead and insert that. Let me go ahead and close that. Go to my next cell here, and also under Insert tab, go to Symbol, and I want the area geometric shape. I want this one, which is the black down pointing triangle. Go ahead and click Insert. Okay, click close and now we have our two shapes now what I want to do is I want to say that if this is a positive amount then use the symbol that goes up a1 if it's a negative amount then I want to use a symbol that goes down so I'm just going to go ahead and insert a extra column here so I'll go ahead and insert uh, insert a column and I'll show you what what this is doing I'm gonna type equal if this cell is greater than this cell, if the value of that cell is greater than that cell, oops, type an if statement. If the value is greater than that cell, then I want to use this one. It points up. Basically, I'm saying uh, it's a positive amount. If that value is less, then I'm going to go use that cell. Press Enter, and now you've noticed that it's pointing up because it's 60%. Let me go ahead and double click the fill handle to bring that down. Now, the reason why it's brought zeros is I need to make these an absolute cell reference. So A1 and B1, they have to have dollar signs in front of them. Because if you notice, if it went down to the cell below, it's going to say A2 and B2. And so I don't want that to change. I want it to stay constant. So what I need to do is press the F4 key. That's going to put a dollar sign in front of the A and the 1. Select B1 and also press F4. And it's going to turn into an absolute cell reference. Go and press enter, and now I'm going to go back here and click, double click the fill handle. It's going to stay the same. You can see now it stay, this stays the same. So I've got my arrows there, right? So that's good. 
Now the next thing I want to do now, I'm going to go ahead and keep this and start building out my formula here. And I'll probably get rid of this column, but I'll co go ahead and build it out here. I want to have this, and I want to include the value there. So in order to do that, I'm going to basically concatenate uh, the, the function or the formula. So that I'm going to use the ampersand. That's going to be shift 7 ampersand. And basically what I want to do is just perform that same calculation I did over here. So I'm going to go and say this cell uh, divided by this cell and minus 1. Before I press enter, you're going to notice that there's actually going to be some formatting errors. But I just wanted to show you how this works. OK, so Excel found a type on the formula. Basically, it said I didn't need my parentheses at the end. And it just did a autocorrect here. And if I wanted to set the correction, yes, I do. And what it's going to do is actually it's going to give me the correct formula. I mean, this is actually the correct output when you think about it, but not the correct formatting. So basically, it's saying, OK, this, is, this value goes up. It's this whole decimal. But this whole decimal out to the percentage really equals 60%. I don't want the decimal representation. I want the percentage repre representation of the value. And this is giving me the decimal representation of the value. And I want that. I do not want that. So the way to get around that is to put this formula into a function called text. So I'm going to go here and type txt. And it's going to put this value into a textual formula. So basically, it's going to take the value and put it into, make it a string. And it's going to make it into a percentage. So what I need to do is also uh, type in, let me go ahead and change, add a parentheses there. And I want to go to that format text argument. So after, after I put the uh, opening parentheses there and the closing parentheses, I have this format text. And the format text I want to do is is percentage. So, so the format text basically to have uh, this value inputted into a percentage. Basically, I'm taking the value as a number and inputting it as text, as a text string. But then I'm going to have a percentage right after that number, just like this one. So I need to have that quote, uh, pound sign, and then percentage, and then close quote, and then close parentheses, press enter. And now it's turned it into a percentage. All I need to do now is double click the fill handle, and it's going to copy the formula down. And basically what it's done is it's giving me my percentage, and then also giving me that symbol, where it is up or down. So I'm going to call that change, Control-C, copy. Go over here, Control-V to paste. And this will be my change column now. I'll go ahead and delete this. So I'm going to go ahead and select this column, right click, and then select delete. And it's going to get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and double click this column to auto fit it. So now I've got my data. All I need to do is chart it out. Now I can, I can go and select inside this range of cells and go to insert uh, column or insert chart. But Excel doesn't really seem to pull the data in too cleanly. So I'm just going to go and click outside and just insert a column chart and then really do it really from scratch. So I'm going to insert a clustered column chart. And right now it's blanks because I haven't selected any data. So I can just go ahead and select data. And for the first series, I'm going to click Add. So for my series name, this basically is my first set of data, which is the set of data of 2004. The values, let me go ahead and delete this. And it's going to be from cell E2 to E13. That's going to be that series of data. So that's it's giving me my data here. Go and click OK. I'm going to add another set, which is going to be the 2014. So I'm going to click on that. And for the series value, let me go and click to delete that value. Delete that there and go ahead and select from A2, excuse me, F2 to F13 and click OK. Now I've got my data here. I've got to get my x-axis or my horizontal category axis labels. And it, de it defaults to giving this numeric data, but we don't want that. Let me go ahead and click Edit. What I want is I want this data. So I'm going to go ahead and select this data from C2 to D13. That's going to be my category axis. You see now it's populated correctly. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Let me move this over here. Click OK. Click OK. And now I've got my data. Let me go ahead and just move this out a bit. And I also want a legend. I don't maybe uh, if I want to show this data, people aren't sure uh, which data it is. So here in Excel 2013, we from previous versions of Excel, we used to have a layout tab here, and it doesn't occur anymore. It does not there anymore. What's happened is when you select on the chart itself, our layout information is actually in that plus sign. So the chart elements uh, are there. Uh, usually they're under the 
before they were under the layout tab of the chart tools but now they have put it somewhere else here in the chart elements you just click on that plus sign and we can go ahead and add our legend here so I'm gonna add the legend there and after and having it on the side that's okay for now so I'm just going to click outside just to get out of that and I have my values here so I'm gonna go and increase this a little bit if I wanted to kind of show this file uh, in an email I probably want to hide a couple things here I probably don't want to show this so I'll go ahead and select that uh, right click and go into hide and that kind of hit, hid that and I probably want to make this table a little bit more presentable so maybe I'll go ahead and select this table and then select the borders and all borders and maybe give this a little bit of a distinguishing color I'll just change the style maybe to to that style oh well, actually the blue would kind of co coincide with that blue there so let me just change it change it to another color maybe a green color right and so now I've got my chart and you can see before I had uh, these kind of fancy colors here you can also do the same here if I go under design and then I have these chart styles maybe I can choose that chart style or maybe this chart style I think this is the one I had earlier and so there's different styles that we can add to it I mean there's a lot of things we can play around with it um, also I probably don't want these grid lines I'll go ahead and view and then get rid of the grid lines and maybe this is something that I can start to email around now since I had this nice little chart color and this nice little table and I have my dynamic uh, labels here so as I said before these are the data labels for uh, our data our, our columns here so as I mentioned before uh, these are data labels under here in the category axis and maybe if I train something here maybe 2014 was actually better than 20, oh, 2004 and maybe instead of being 112 it was 150 press enter and you'll not notice that it's going to turn positive with the up arrow here so basically we've turned our uh, x-axis into also a data label so that's kind of a nice way to show it maybe instead of putting it up here on top you can put it here at the bottom to kind of differentiate it and not have so much uh, information running as part of the chart up here so there you go that's the way that we can create a data label on our x-axis hope that helps thanks for watching